Hello and what is up YouTube? My name is G3Iron and welcome to our 27th episode of our featured build discussion series. And today we are featuring Duke of Snuff's Tectonic Slam Super Tank Juggernaut that uses Endurance Charges and Tectonic Slam. Both of those things are getting buffs and changes in 3.11, so you can at least project for the moment until we've got patch notes that this is going to be one of the choicest builds for you to try out in the upcoming 3.11 Harvest League. Are you sick of dying? Are you sick of donating 10% of your experience to random map mods? Well then look no further than this super tank that will take you from wherever it is that you're starting to wherever it is that you want to finish. Regardless if it's softcore or hardcore, this character is tanky as hell. For those of you who are new to the channel, you can like, subscribe, and ding the bell to be notified about future video discussions just like this one. All of the information about this particular featured build, including the video, the path of building, and the forum guide thread are included down below in the video description, along with a join link to our Discord as well as our Patreon if you'd like to support the channel. Above my slightly balding forehead, there should be some timestamps for your pleasure that you can also access down below in the video description. Without any further ado, let's jump into this Nebulok Juggernaut put together by Duke of Snuff, aka Jower. As I said in the intro, this is a build that you can play in Hardcore, and unfortunately for the Duke, he did rip at about 50% XP at level 99. Oof, that, that must have hurt. Nonetheless, any build that can push to level 99 in Hardcore and get 50% to level 100 is a solid build, regardless if you want to play Hardcore or Softcore. The build guide starts off with several different testimonies from players who have tried out this build, used it to great effectiveness, and enjoyed their gameplay through it. If you're ever looking at a build and you're wondering, huh, I wonder if this build is really for me, you can go and take a look at other players' comments and use those as a jumping point or a starting point to see is this maybe something that is going to resonate with my gameplay experience. Jower gives us his introduction as follows. I consider this maybe the tankiest hardcore solo build at the moment, not counting multi-hundred exalt cluster jewel abusing builds. The damage is decent considering the investment and how tanky it is. Delirium is mostly physical damage, so I hardly take any damage even if I'm tanking from the entire screen. You've got 8k life as your health pool, and then you can do simulacrums whether solo or in party setup. Either one is possible. You might be wondering where all of these layers of defenses come from. Well, it's got capped chaos resistance, 50,000 armor, and then max effect molten shell. It's got increased effect of fortify, and then gives you an additional 38% reduced elemental damage taken with 2,000 HP regen and leech. Now, since we're at a moment where we are essentially transitioning or getting ready to transition from Delirium being in every single map and Harvest, it will be present. Delirium will be present, but not necessarily in every single map. I feel like it is needed for us to discuss Cluster Jewels just for a moment for the sake of this series. We're not sure yet exactly how common Cluster Jewels are are going to be moving forward. So at the moment in Delirium, it's very possible for you to stack cluster jewels and to acquire them and to craft them for yourself at a relatively easy pace. The most expensive part of this build potentially is going to be getting the cluster jewels, depending on how rare the specific cluster jewels are that are needed for this build. If through the implementation of Delirium into the core game is relatively smooth and therefore cluster jewels are relatively common inside Harvest, then you can expect it to be a relatively easy, replicatable build, including all of the various minutiae that is included with cluster jewels. The setup that Duke recommends for cluster jewels is using one large cluster jewel with eight points on it, a unique medium cluster for a megalomaniac medium, nature's affinity as your small cluster jewel. The notables that you'll be aiming for is of course overlord, which overlord gives you fortify when you hit with a mace or a scepter or a staff. Since we're using nebulox, that's going to be no problem for us. And it means that we don't have to spend a gem slot on grabbing fortify, whether that's on our movement skill or on our main active. We don't have to worry about that because overlord simply is going to give us fortify on hit. That fortify by default from Overlord lasts for six seconds. Duke recommends using Inspiration Support, which gives you more damage, a bit of crit, and it gives you a big bonus for super easy sustain of attack while doing single target bosses. Fuel the Fight is going to be a notable that provides you with both Mana Leech and Attack Speed, and then either Feed the Fury or Drive the Destruction to give Life Leech. Your main gem setup for this particular build is going to be focused around Tectonic Slam. 
Supporting Tectonic Slam, you're going to want Melee Physical, Elemental Damage with Attacks, Elemental Focus, Endurance Charge on Melee Slam. You can switch that out if you're ever in a boss fight where you can't stun. And then Concentrated Effect for Bosses or Ruthless for Clear. But you can also swap that out with Pulverize. There's actually several different support gems that are available presently. And that's before we're going to get some additional support gems potentially in 3.11 that could augment our build even further. You'll need a spot for Fortify support up until you get the Overlord Jewel Cluster on your tree. But once you get that, you can swap out Fortify and then go back on to that full six link setup that doesn't include Fortify. For defensive gems, Duke recommends that we use Cast When Damage Taken, Increased Duration, Vol Molten Shell, and then Wave of Conviction at level 7. So that way Cast When Damage Taken is going off at relatively high frequencies. One unique aspect of this particular build is actually taking advantage of Summon Skitterbots. There aren't that many melee builds out there that are taking advantage of Summon Skitterbots at the moment, and this is an interesting use of them. You'll want to stack Blood and Sand along with Herald of Ash, of course, those are two no-brainers, but then you use Summon Skitterbots because they both chill as well as shock nearby enemies, which increases the damage that you're able to deal. Now, I mentioned the buff to Tectonic Slam that's coming in 3.11, and here's where the buff comes in. It used to be that when you were attacking with Tectonic Slam, you would have a 35% chance to consume an Endurance Charge to create a Charge Slam. This means that there were times where you would consume your Endurance Charges and do a Charge Slam and it felt great. You'd do a bunch of damage. And then there were other times where it simply wouldn't proc. You wouldn't do a Charge Slam and you'd be standing there just doing regular attacks with Tectonic Slam. So what Grinding Gear Games is doing in Harvest League is they are adding consistency to Tectonic Slam. The skill will now consume Endurance charges every third attack. Bonus damage will be applied per endurance charge that you have on your character when that slam, that third hit, takes effect. This is a massive, massive improvement for quality of life for Tectonic Slam, where we are no longer dependent on RNG. We now have a guaranteed outcome and a guaranteed improvement to our damage on every third hit. If nothing else changes with patch notes, for buffs or for nerfs, then this will take an already strong solid build and make it even more consistent for its damage output. For a build that boasts as much tankiness as this super tank does, adding damage consistency is mwah, it's magnifico. This is, of course, a juggernaut build, which means you've got a couple of options as you are leveling, whether or not you're playing softcore and you need some more damage and accuracy, or if you're playing in hardcore or simply hate dying and hate having to rerun a zone or refight a boss, then you've got options there as well. Typically, when I play a juggernaut, I go unflinching with my first labyrinth, which gives you 30% chance to gain an endurance charge when you are hit, and then 25% chance that if you would gain an endurance charge, you instead gain up to your maximum number of endurance charges. Then it also gives you gain one endurance charge every second if you've been hit recently, which recently refers to the last four seconds, and then you gain plus one to maximum endurance charges. If you've done nothing else at the point at which you've taken unflinching for your endurance charges, you're already sitting at a maximum of four endurance charges that you'll have and carry with you pretty regularly throughout your leveling process. If you go unflinching with your first lab, then your second lab you can go unrelenting, which gives you 1% additional physical damage reduction per endurance charge, 8% reduced elemental damage taken while at maximum endurance charges, and then 4% to chaos resistance per endurance charge. If you'd prefer to go for more damage early on, then you can grab Grab Undeniable, which gives you a thousand flat accuracy rating, which is massive early on. Then you get 1% increased attack speed per 200 accuracy rating, which means because you get a flat 1000 accuracy rating just from taking Undeniable, that's 5% increased attack speed just because of Undeniable itself. In addition, you get 30% increased accuracy rating if you've dealt a critical strike in the past eight seconds and 30% increased damage if you've dealt a critical strike in the past eight seconds. You then also gain accuracy rating equal to your strength. Now, the past 8 seconds matters because, of course, we are going to be using Elemental Overload, but more on that in a few moments. Lastly, I generally recommend players take Unbreakable at their Labyrinth at the very, very end because, of course, it gives you a massive bonus for your armor on your body armor, but 
you're not going to have great body armor typically as you are leveling and it's not that great as you're going through the leveling process anyway and so you might as well grab that at the end of your ascendancy process where you really are going to have the top end of your gear available to you and where doubling your armor from your body armor is going to be the most value that you can possibly get. Unbreakable does give you 5% reduced damage taken and it regenerates 2% of your life per second so if you're lazy like me and don't like to use your flask that much maybe you decide hey I'll grab unbreakable before my last labyrinth but if you're somewhat active and able to manage your flasks you won't need that regen until much later on in the game the tree for the most part is oriented on the left hand side of the tree near the marauder tree and of course going up and grabbing elemental overload from the templar that is a massive massive damage boost for this build as the Duke of Snuff has laid out this particular POB that he recommends, if we don't use Elemental Overload and instead choose to try to scale up our damage elsewhere, this is about 20% of our total damage that we will lose. So it's a long way away that we travel to go grab this, but is a massive, massive increase to our damage. Yes, you can build without using Elemental Overload for a build like this, but you're going to change a lot of the key items at that point, and essentially it becomes a slightly different version of a tectonic slam character if you choose to go that route so unless you're really committed to playing a crit based character with scaling your multiplier just go ellie overload and enjoy the damage we've been talking endurance charges because we are of course going to stack them both for our damage source on nebulok as well as of course for damage reduction as it's coming at us there are several different endurance charge nodes that you can grab down near the duelist tree and in the templar tree and of course in the marauder tree that gives you a base increase of three maximum endurance charges from your passive tree now again this is a 3.10 passive tree so i've got to say that with a disclaimer who knows what this tree and this side of the tree is going to look like in the upcoming 311 expansion with harvest league but if it looks anything similar to this this is still going to be a very very solid tree for us to go through we haven't gotten any word that there's going to be any major changes or reductions to this side of the tree so this as a bare bones outline is going to be very very solid for you moving forward and then you can adjust the various branches that you're going to choose to grab from there if there's something stronger that's available in 311 you can take a couple points and go grab that instead now one of the reasons why stacking and endurance charges are so dang important for this particular build is because of the nebulok this is an elder item and it only drops there so don't expect to have nebuloks available to you on day one day two of the league and even early on within the first week they're usually a little bit expensive in terms of where their price ends at a league they generally drop in price as more players start farming the elder nebulox give you a whole bunch of physical damage then they gain a whole bunch of physical attack damage as extra fire damage and then they give you additional chaos resistance per endurance charge so we're essentially getting four percent to chaos resistance per endurance charge from our nebulox but then we're also getting it since we're dual wielding it we're getting it twice and then we're also getting that as well from our ascendancy so that's a whole bunch of chaos resistance from two weapons and from our ascendancy while we're not totally immune to chaos damage, we are chaos capped with this build, which is, which is not something that a whole lot of life builds can brag about. So again, all sources of damage, whether it's elemental, physical, or chaos, all of them get reduced as they're coming at us. While Nebulok boasts some solid defensive abilities through the chaos resistances per endurance charge, it also gives us 1% reduced elemental damage taken from hits per endurance charge. Again, you want to stack as many endurance charges as possible for defenses. On top of that, you get 5 to 8 physical damage per endurance charge with 500 flat armor added per endurance charge. You don't want to be losing your endurance charges. For those of you who are wondering why aren't you using a mortal call if you're stacking that many endurance charges this is why we want to keep our endurance charges on our character and keep them consistently up they're going to provide us with consistency of damage and consistency of defenses one of the drawbacks of nebulok the essential drawback that there is to it is that you get 200 fire damage taken per second per endurance charge if you've been hit recently but don't worry about that we out regen that out leech it you don't even actually have to be leeching in order to not worry about that damage we absolutely out regen that damage by the time you get your build put together i feel that it, i have some level of responsibility of letting new players know this combs way is a very known scam in the game so oftentimes there are different types of scams inside path of exile we've got an entire video that's dedicated to discussing and informing you about different scams that scammers try to pull one of them is the combs way trick combs way and combs sign both share the same in-game art 
So what many players will do is they will go to buy their Combs Way, which is fulfilled only through, or upgraded rather, only through a prophecy. So usually that costs some amount of currency. In some leagues, it's multiple X the difference. In other leagues, it's a few chaos. Either way, depending on the league and the demand for these items, players get scammed every single league because they're going to buy a Combs Way and they accidentally don't read the entirety of the ring and they buy a Combs Sign, but for the price of Combs Way. So just be aware of that in-game art matters and the fact that the in-game art for two different rings is the same in-game art just please 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 be aware of that when you're trading for your combs way for this build all right so why combs way well of course because it gives you plus one to maximum endurance charges you're going to dual wield those rings so that gives you plus two to your maximum endurance charges and you're also getting plus three life gain for each enemy hit by your attacks along with regenerating 0.4 percent of life per second per endurance charge the amount of regen that you get from these rings is massive and again will offset that nebulock drawback of having fire damage taken over time for each endurance charge you're essentially scaling up your regen as you scale up the damage that you take and eventually your regen beats out the damage that you take now if you prefer to go with a build that uses rare boots maybe because it's going to be easier for you to cap your resistances or maybe because you're looking for specific modifiers on your boots that's fine but duke of snuff here recommends that we go with combs roots and it's with very very good reason it's a massive amount of flat life 200 flat life on boots is nothing to sneeze at and then action speed cannot be modified to below base value and you get unwavering stance if you're using combs roots this means that the natural affinity small cluster jewel which gives you nature's presence which attaches grasping vines to you it means that they don't really matter you can't be slowed down below your base value so you never have to worry about that and you never have to worry about getting stunned these are two massive massive quality of life mechanisms that you can rely on to keep your character alive in the body armor slot, you're going to want to go for an astral plate that's got as much armor as possible. Remember, we get double the bonuses off of our armor because of our ascendancy. So if we're able to scale up our armor as high as we possibly can, then that means that we're increasing the value of our ascendancy that much more. On top of getting as much armor as you can on your astral plate, you're also going to want to get as much life and resistances because we are using so many uniques. You need to make sure that you're getting your resistances in the slots that are required for them. For those of you that are really looking to min-max the build that aren't just looking to maybe toy around or see something that you want to mess around with, if you're really looking to push with this build, then you're going to want to get corrupted gloves that have got cursed enemies with elemental weakness on hit. This will further increase your damage because all of our damage is coming through as fire damage. One quick note here about flasks. If you want to increase your damage even further, then you can take advantage of using the Wise Oak. You don't have to worry about balancing the Wise Oak with triple resistances because we're doing fire damage. So just make sure that your top resistance for uncapped resistance is fire damage and you'll be fine from there that'll add an additional amount of elemental pen that you otherwise wouldn't have lastly for those of you who are looking to level up this build duke of snuff has given us an exceptional leveling section with multiple different pobs that you can use as you are leveling up to take a look at what you should be prioritizing as you are going through the leveling process in killing bandits killing bosses and progressing your way towards maps well, thanks so much everybody for joining us for for today's 27th episode and our discussion if you've got feedback thoughts or ideas about how to improve on this build or play this build in 3.11 i look forward to reading your comments down below thanks once again to duke of snuff for letting us show off this build as we all prepare and get excited for the upcoming 3.11 harvest league i fully expect tectonic slam boys to be all over the place enjoying taking down bosses wherever they may show up in ray class thanks once again for watching and i hope harvest league is the league a mirror of calandra drops for you